Did you ever think they would poison your food or anything? Yeah, I didn't eat it. Did I so when I went when I when I went to Onley. So when I went into Onley on the when I went to, into Onley Prison, I got arrested for the contempt charge in Hull, which were in Leeds, where I asked a Muslim, "How are you feeling about your verdict?" On his way into court, they took me in on the contempt charge. They put me in Hull Prison, where there's not many Muslims. I was fine. They put me on healthcare wing, so I refused protection. They put me on the healthcare wing, so I'm on the hospital wing. People who are in there for hospital, so I was sound. I was probably in there for about ten days, mm -hmm. and then uh, I thought this is all right. Yeah, I'm safe. There's no risk. I can deal with this. This is all right. And then, because um, every other jail, I've had to fight my way through it. So I thought, I'm safe. And then they come in the morning and they said, you're getting transferred. I said, where? And they goes, we can't tell you. We'll tell you when you get in the car. So then I'm thinking, am I going to kick off? So I'm thinking, well, if you sort of sank out for me. Are you not just going to transfer me? Have you sorted something out? And they said, yeah, it's all been sorted. You get transferred. So then I get in the car. So where am I going? They said, Onley. I said, Onley? And Onley's got the highest percent of Muslims of any CCAP prison in the country, yeah? So as I'm on the way there, I'm thinking, well, something's got to be sorted, man. They must, they must have some unit in Onley that I'm going to go to in Onley. So I land in Onley. And I go before the governor and he goes, well, I think you know what's going to happen here, don't you? I said, yeah, I do. Well, you do, didn't you? He goes, well, you're going to be in danger, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, you're going to have to isolate yourself then, aren't you? I said, what do you mean isolate myself? We're well, going to have to self-isolate, which means you're going to have to want your door locked all the time. And I'm such a, and maybe I should have just said, yeah. Right? But I said, no. I said, where are you putting me? And he said, we're putting me on this wing. I said, well, you open the door, I'm coming out of it. And then he goes, we're well, going to get her. I goes, someone's going to get her. Yeah? I said, but you bought me here. I was fine where I just was. You've brought me in. So then, they, then he goes, well, you're going down the block. I said, what am I going down the block for? He go, so the block's where you go for punishment. Down the block, you're on 23 and a half hour lockup. You get, you've got a little blue mat. That's it. And there's no TV. There's no electric in there. You just, it's where people go, stab people, do mad things in jail. You end up down the block. So he said, you're going down the block. So I think, what the fuck am I going down the block for? You've, I haven't done anything wrong here. Yeah, you've brought me here. You're asking if I'll self-isolate. I'm saying no. Yeah? Why would I self-isolate myself? Lock myself up for like if, if the door opens, I'm coming out of it. Yeah? Give me a job. Do what everyone else does. You brought me here. Yeah? And you can deal with the problems that come from it. So then he puts me down the block. I'm taken down the block. So I'm in the block. So then I say, well, I ain't eating or drinking yeah? at all. And the reason being that my food would come to me in a little box and it says Yaxley Lennon on it. Yeah. So the lads that deliver the food or the people working the servery, the best job in jail is servery. The Muslims run the jail. They've got all the best jobs. They control everything. So my food's getting delivered to me. You actually learn, you can get anything you want in jail, smuggled in, yeah? Anything you want. It wouldn't be hard to get rat poison. It wouldn't be hard to poison my food. So I'd sit there and think, well, and the, but the, the reason was the World Cup starting in a week. I wasn't there for the World Cup. I ain't got a TV. All I was thinking is, well, I'm in jail. Get, get a TV. I'll watch the World Cup. Yeah. So it puts me down the block in on Lee. And I say, well, I ain't eating or drinking until you give me a TV. He said, we can't have a TV. There's no, there's no sockets in here. I said, What's the, I didn't put me here. You put me here. Why am I being punished with no TV? So this is going on. So I say, I'm not eating or drinking at all. Yeah. And then I'm talking to the other lads in the cells. And this is where it gets so sad. You've got a prison governor on next in you. Mm -hmm. Ask him about spice. Yeah. So this boy in the cell next door. And I used to get, you get 30 minutes a day. So my 30 minutes, I'd come out of my cell, I'd get put out and there's li like a courtyard. There's all the cells and they all look in on this courtyard and I'd literally preach. I think the first day I walked out, I said, Islam is the cancer, I am the cure. Yeah. And it's my half hour. So, and then I'd be debating and in the end, becoming friendly with some of the Muslim lads, having a laugh with them in, in, in the thing. Yeah. But saying, lads, ask your imam this, ask your imam that. I'll be going through and dissecting all the stuff. So when, they, when the imam would come, they'd obviously be asking him about the age of Aisha. Stuff they don't tell you when you convert. I said, oh, you just, they just convert you. You don't even know who you converted to. Then the imam come, he goes, can you stop, please, Tommy, stop. I said, stop what? Tell them the truth. Stop educating them. No, I won't stop. I won't stop. But I refused to eat. But what they didn't know, so every time the food comes to my door, I said, fuck off. I'm not eating that. Yeah. I'm not eating anything. Don't bring me any food. Don't bring me any drink. I'm not eating. Yeah. And I'm going to end up collapsing. And when I collapse, I'm going to end up in hospital. And then it's on your prison. Yeah. Because you've done this to me. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But the lad next door, this boy's next door, he's been down there two months. And what he's done is, he's getting out in, he's, he's getting out in about eight weeks. But he's hooked on spice. He come into jail, not a drug addict. Now he's a drug addict. And he's cancelled all his visits because he don't want anyone to see him in the state he is. So he smashed up his cell so he can get isolated. 
so that he's not near drugs. This is what the kids had to do. He's sitting on 23 and a half hour bang up on a blue mat with nothing voluntarily. Yeah, He don't want to come out of that room because when he gets freed in eight weeks, he wants to be a bit normal. He doesn't want to be hooked on drugs. This is what he's done. So he's in there. I'm talking to him, the boy next door, and, and we have a shower at the same time. So he's, I'd go in the shower and he'd pass me under his cereal. He'd pass me under his apple, yeah? So I would be eating, but the prison don't think I'm eating anything, yeah? So I'm in there and I'm, I'm getting my stuff and each day I'm going back. And then on, on the seventh day, he, he calls me in. The governor calls me in. He goes, right, sign this. I said, what's this? And it was saying that you will be relocated on the wing, um, but you will not be allowed out of your cell. You will still be taken down to... The, and it was, it was that I was doing, doing it voluntary. I said... No, I'm not signing that. Yeah. I'm not doing this. Yeah. You fucking done this. All right. So put me back in the cell. And then they take me back in the cell. And then 10 minutes later, they bring me back in. They said, okay, we've reworded it. We are forcing you. Yeah. But we're going to put you on the wing with a TV. Yeah. Will you eat if we give you, a, if you, if this happens? So I'm looking, thinking, England are playing tonight. Yeah. So I, I said, what time? <laughs> when is this? If I sign this, when is this going to happen? Is it going to happen before the football? He said, yes, it's going to happen for the football. I fucking signed it. <laughs> so he, he, he signed it. Then what they've done is, so bearing in mind, my missus, my missus worked at a school at the time. So I'm in only prison. So I've done a week. I've done a week laying in this shitty cell. They then bring me up on the wing. But the deal is I'm not allowed out. So the cell's locked. So I'm on the wing, cell's locked. So people can come to my cell. I'm getting shit, proof, 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 like literally human shit, feces, uh, feces put through my window. I've got them all at my window kicking off. I'm thinking... I was fine in whole. Who made this decision to bring me here? And what was the fucking purpose of it? Yeah. And I, and I thought, so, and I still wouldn't eat the meals I said, until I got my money. So I got my money on my canteen and I bought tuna. So I had, I could afford seven tins of tuna for the week. Yeah. So that's all I had. I had one tin of tuna a day. That was it. And then water. That's why I lost 30 pounds. I come out looking like a crackhead. Yeah. But I was, um, and I was in there and, and, and for half hour a day, I'd, They'd bring me down from there. They'd bring me down to the block again for my exercise. That's where I'd have my exercise. That's where I'd have my shower. But, and that's when I could have my phone call, which was at lunchtime during the day. My kids are at school and my wife works at school. So I literally couldn't ring anyone. Couldn't speak to anyone. I mean, 23 and a half hour bang up. It, it, I didn't, it, 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 they knocked on my door. Then the screws come to my door one time and said, where's your wife? I'm laying in this cell. I'm like, what? And they said, where's your wife? I said, how the fuck am I going to know where my wife is? I'm banged up in here. I don't even get to use the phone at night. So they said, okay, well, there's intelligence that your wife's going to be attacked with acid. I'm like, what? And they said, yeah, we need to know where she is. And then they just shut the door. I'm like, bruv. Like, it was not until Saturday then. Or the, then I get to ring my wife and the police have knocked on her door and they've given her intel and my mum's that there's going to be an acid attack against them. And then what they leave them with is some little bit of paperwork that tells them what to do if you're attacked with acid. But then the, the deep thing is, and I question... Was there that plan to do that to my wife or was that all to fry my head? Because it worked. I come out of that prison. You can watch a, there's a video where I come out and I watched one recently of that night I went on Tucker Carlson. I was ill. I was sick, seriously sick. Like, I was a mess. It took me, it still probably is taking it. It's, it took its toll on me, that sentence. See uh, everything you've been through, see, because you're divorced now, Thomas. Yeah. Is that... A mutual agreement or is it the stresses you put everybody around you under as well with the life that you led? So I I put my wife, I put my dad's here, my mum, I put them through some mad. You know when I've done my Telford documentaries yeah. recently on the rape of Britain? I had them all turn off my mum's house looking for me. I had, um, I've had my mum's house, their, their house got smashed to bits. Yeah, I've had my car, my wife's car got blown up. So yeah, I've caused massive problems. I was giving out items in the early years, stop this activism. I can't, like, I believe in it. But I put my wife, and then it, it was a bit of a, it was a mutual agreement because there was a time come when people were sent to my family's house, Antifa activists, again, you've seen it on that documentary, yeah? yeah. Threatens to kill my kids, doesn't get arrested. That was the final straw for my wife. She said, enough's enough, man, because she can't have the kids je jeopardised like this and their safety, So, which I agree. So that, that happened. I, I position myself out of the country now, and I come back in. So how does that feel, like losing everybody who stood by you and loves you more than anything, but your stubbornness and your, <laughs> your grit to try to make change? Like how does it then, how do you then play, how does that play on your mind? Like I just keep saying, through sacrifice comes success. Through sacrifice comes success. Through sacrifice comes success. So where are we now? We're in a different 
global position than we were four or five years ago. Yeah, People who hated me those years ago, who are questioning everything since COVID, questioning everything since the vaccine, they're all questioning everything since Ukraine, since all these things. I see a lot more support now for what I say than there, what there was because more people see the media lie, more people see that the government aren't our friends, that they aren't doing what's best interest for us. More people see that. So, um, look, my... I think my ch my children will grow up and read about their dad or hear about their dad properly. And uh, they understand now. I, I have an amazingly close relationship with my, even now with my ex-wife and my children. I've seen the dinner she gave you. It was fucking terrible. Oh, she's, yeah. probably <laughs> done, she's probably done you a favour leaving you, mate. She's doing like that. We You're done. better off in the fucking jail, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? It was seven. It was seven. Did you see? She's working with the governor, mate, giving you meals like that. <laughs> that was fucking terrible. <laughs> I can't even tell me. And that's the reason why they're not married. <laughs> oh, mate. Oh, she'll love this. So, sorry, Jenna. I'm sorry, yeah. You're famous as a shit cook <laughs> a great wife ex-wife but a shit yeah. cook an amazing mother do you know what I always say to her I say you you because my she is an amazing mum I never have to worry Yeah, some of my mates are constantly worrying battling with their missus who's going out on, on the gear going out on the sesh she's doing this she's doing that they're always worrying about her. I never had a worry with my wife she just wants to be a mum so that was the problem she just wants to be a mum she wants us to be a family and then there's me and then there was my politics so I always say, well, I wouldn't be able to just go sit in jail for six months at a time if if you weren't such a great mum because I can sit there comfortably because I know mm -hmm. that kids are all right. Yeah. But um, I say, and I, I try and say it to my kids, I say like, do you know what? I, I, whether this is right or wrong, when I was going back to court for the contempt charge, I was at the Old Bailey and I said I was offered a deal by the state to plead guilty and apologise and I, I, won't, I wouldn't go back to prison. Oh, okay. <laughs> Think about my son now. And my, yeah. yeah. And my son said, um, my son said, Dad, just please, just please, Dad, please. I said, I can't, man. And uh, I said, whether that's right putting on his, his head as well. I said, if I ask you one question, son, your sister, she was 12 at the time, there's girls your sister's age who are being kidnapped and tortured. Yeah, they're getting abused in a bad way. I said, if I say no to them now, this is going to blow up again. If it blows up, more people are looking at this and listening to this issue. Yeah, I said, if that saves one girl like your sister, one, just like your sister, yeah, what should I do? And he said, he said, yeah, Dad, he gets you right. So they get, I think I was just trying to get permission off him, but explaining it to him in a way that he understood it. That, and I think, and he does understand it now, and he sees it. Remember, my kids travel around everywhere with me, so they only see me get really a positive reaction from. Many people, they've grown up with me knowing that many of my friends aren't white. They know my stance on racism. They know my stance on Muslims. I've sat and introduced them. Sully, one of my best mates, he's a Kenyan Muslim. So I, I, I introduced at a very early age. I said, son, you're going to hear things. And my daughters, you're going to hear things about me. Yeah, You're going to hear people say things. You know my relationship with Sully. You know I love Sully. You know Sully's a Muslim. You know that. So you know I don't have an embedded problem with him. And he said, yeah. I said, but I do talk about Islam. So I, I've educated my kids in a way to say, because you, you can criticise a religion. You can and you should, yeah, without hating its followers. So I've done that. And, but I, I also know that my kids and have been put in some terrible positions. Yeah.